welcome to the podcast, man. This is why now is your time, man. I have a special, special group of guys today, man. I'm very excited to share them with you guys. I have a couple questions for them. We don't want to hold them too long because I know they're very busy, man. I'm going to let them um, introduce themselves to you. Let's start with you. How are you doing? I'm Andre Livingston. So what you do What, what you do for a living? Uh, I'm a uh, truck driver at Porter Houston. Okay, good. My name is Carl Davis. I own a barber and beauty shop. Mm. My name is Rico Davis. Uh, man, what is it that I don't do? But I'm in management. <laughs> okay. In management. Uh, my name is Ken Jones. I'm in uh, management in the beverage industry. Mm. So, um, I just want to ask you guys is, who started the group? Well, myself, Rico Davis. Okay. Um, the reason I started this group is because I have been doing, uh, man, so many things in the community for so many years and uh i wanted to do something where i can have brothers mm. um i feel like i'm doing okay changing one person but i feel like if i can get some brothers and we all have the same passion and the same vision to gotcha. help young men i think we can be more powerful as a group mm. and uh so far i think we've been doing pretty good all right so is it is just is it all just black men no, actually, I have a, a another guy. He just never been to any of the events. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's kind of like been the hard thing. But mm, Getting you know, all y'all together? Well, one of the things that I wanted to do is try to make sure I get most of the guys from Houston. Okay. Granted, we do have a couple of guys that's out of town. Okay. Um, so, one of them, he definitely makes it here pretty much in all of the events that we have. Mm. Like, he'll be in town this this uh friday actually speaking at a high school okay so so i see i know i know something i know y'all 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 very 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 busy man y'all everywhere you know how many how many of y'all total is it 16 16 16 yes, yes 16. so y'all do multiple events so y'all just do like do y'all spread yourself around yeah yeah pretty much pretty much yeah, yeah. so how how, how, how usually y'all get in the events like how do y'all how do y'all book the events um I mean, since I started the group, man, I've, I've been getting phone calls. I've been getting emails, text messages. Mm. And people kind of want us to be a part of uh, what it is that they have. Um, everyone loves the idea of us helping young men. Okay. So that's why we're doing what we've been doing. Um, you know, speaking at schools, um, teaching young men how to become a man. Okay. Um, you know, just because you're a certain age doesn't qualify you as being a man. Okay. okay. Um, and, and a lot of times, young men especially like with single moms you know they always telling the child hey you got to do this i mean most of the times they tell them everything that's correct mm. but as a child right. and you know you've been a kid before oh, you yeah. know your mom tell you the same thing over and over and over <laughs> you kind of let it go one is not oh, yeah. you don't want to you don't exactly yeah so whenever there's another male figure that comes mm. in sometimes they listen to them okay. you know so i feel like it's not going to hurt they hear something from a positive male role positive model. you're right that's the key word positive yes sir so in in, in um y'all at this y'all be doing welcome to the group what's your name gabriel gabriel yeah, man. what you set. do for a living um it contractor model actor and writer uh, you ever oh y'all might be <laughs> competing nah, <man. laughs> a couple of things <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um so it's, it's 16 it's 16 of y'all yes. one person from out of town yes and how many events y'all been doing a week like on average my oh, boys will you answer two? that question before you answer that question, um, when did y'all first start? What was the first day y'all started? That um, is a good question. Uh, <clears throat> I will say six months ago. Yeah. Okay, so six months ago. Six months ago. Y'all yeah. started. Yeah. And then those t-shirts I see, who, who came up with that? This man right here. Right Mr. Here. Rico. Right there. Okay. Mr. Davis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, y'all got them for sale for people to get? Yes. Uh, you can actually, matter of fact, a guy inboxed me today. He wants a shirt. I actually sent one out to a guy in uh, Orlando, Florida <coughs> okay. uh, last week. But yeah, they're online. Well, reach out to me through email. We're actually getting ready to put all that together now. We're I actually working on our website at the moment. I got you. So uh, I typed up some questions that some ladies want to know, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, that's the hot topic. That's yeah, the hot topic. Yeah. I, I, can, I can answer that real quick and sum it up. <laughs> Out of that, because this is what I tell them. Out of that 16, there's eight, eight spoken eight, for, and there's eight, eight, eight not spoken for. Okay, yeah. good. So yeah, there's 80 y'all that's married. Yes, sir. And yeah. 80 y'all that's not married. That's yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> what's the age range between you guys? I think it the oldest, wakes. yeah, I think the oldest is 54, 55, and the youngest yeah. might be 41. 40, 41, something okay. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Was that Damien? Actually, Damien, Damien, yeah, Damien might be 37. Who's 37? Who's 37? Who's 37? Who's 37? Uh, the one with the black beard. 
Oh, oh. Roy. No, not Roy. No, no. Not Roy. Roy. Avion? 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 No, Avion. Avion. Mostly black. He got a little he got, he got couple of here. specs of gray in That's there. That's what made him qualify. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, he's 37. Okay. Oh, so you just said something. So what's the criteria? Um, I would probably say I feel guys that can bring value to the to the group. Okay. Because there's a million dudes out here with gray beard that okay. I think is attractive and dress a certain way. Okay. But what can you do as far as help mentor young men? You know? Okay, I got you. That's what I would probably say. Um, the vision. What's the vision and the mission and the mission of this group? Somebody. I mean, I have it, but you've been hitting y'all two been since day one, so <laughs> y'all should know what we talked about. Um. Have you said much? I just got here. I want to get I want to just come in to take the floor. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, 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 I get the chance I, I, to relax for a second. It's like when you, when you look at how we all came together in terms of initially, it was like, hey, man, the, the fashion thing, let's teach these young boys how to dress. Okay. You know, and from there, it kind of evolved to say, hey, you know what? This is more than just that part of it. Mm -hmm. It's more of a mentorship. Okay. And that's the biggest piece that we as a group discuss and talk about and we all kind of like go forward on that goal okay we're, we're mentoring young kids mm -hmm. so, so that's the whole the whole premises that's the premise, is to give the, back to give yeah, back right. to, you know, to the neighborhood yeah, yeah. To, to these young sisters um, so what kind of events y'all usually y'all usually get involved in like what's the, the kind of events y'all do community events uh we have a couple of upcoming events where we're speaking at high schools elementary schools and middle schools um we also have an event where we're going to a senior citizen home i believe okay. and talking to some of those people and you know just to make their day better because you know a lot of times i was just talking to someone about this you know people will drop their elderly family members off and kind of just forget about them yeah you know so we're gonna go make some of those people feel you know loved he didn't take um, the reason why we joined. Okay, what's the Valentine's reason? Day? I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yeah. Twenty nine ladies feel good. Yeah, mm, yeah. I mean, okay. I didn't want to yeah. say that, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little weird. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're taking. Gonna make these uh, ladies feel good. I didn't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, they told me they gonna have music playing too. Uh -oh. All right, all right. Okay, you know, so, it is what it is. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so I, I think that uh, after we do this one, uh, you know, even they say that it's going to open up a can of worm because they're actually associated with a total of 20 senior mm -hmm. citizen homes. So okay. I think we're on to something big. Um, yeah. So this is a question ladies want to know. Okay. okay. The dresser. <laughs> Who would y'all consider out of the 16 the top dresser? Oh wow, <laughs> that's a broad Ooh. spectrum. Honestly, man. I think everybody's gonna everybody. say Everybody, <laughs> but yeah, because I can honestly tell you, man, like when we know that we getting ready to do a photo shoot, we yeah. all trying to look our best. Right. Nobody wants to feel like, oh shit, I don't feel like I'm up to par. You know, right. if I had to throw somebody else's hat in the ring, I'd have to say Damien. This dude shows up at the MLK parade with a rhinestone hat and an all white <laughs> suit. With, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, what are you doing? It's a parade, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he just goes above and beyond for yeah. any, anything. Anything. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, why are you doing we're at Circle K today? What do you have this suit on for? So the ladies want to know, though, like, how y'all putting these outfits together? They want to know, like, how exactly y'all putting them together? It's a, um, it's a vision. I mean, you, I, I just say for myself, when I'm, when I'm out in the stores, I might see a jacket. Six months later, I might see a shirt. I and I just kind of, I remember that I had that item and it just come together. You know, I do the things. same thing, man. I will hold on to a pair yeah. of pants for like months and like, you know, one day I'm gonna find something right. to go with that. <laughs> got stuff with tags. I swear. I'm, like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wear something with that. Yeah, but, you know, like, too. yeah, it just, yeah. It just come together. And one of the good things is I can say that everyone have their own style. Yes. Right, right. So that's what doesn't make us all look the same. Okay. Right. 
Yeah, definitely. Because so they, you know, they like, man, you gotta ask them. You gotta ask them, like, where they get their style from? Who picking their outfits? <laughs> none of y'all got, none of y'all got style. Stylist. No, none of us. We no, all. What I can say is that uh, since I started the group, uh, there was actually a store that I used to always go to. Now they pretty much like one of our sponsors. So okay. we go there yeah. with discounts on clothes, and you know, I like it because his things you don't see just on the average everyday person. Mm, okay. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of big things coming up too. Are y'all are y'all turning down any 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 events? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. turn some down. Yeah. Okay. Mainly he turns them down for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I, mean, yeah. I, I, I be wanting to know like you know y'all taking all the events or certain events. Oh no! Right. You know, like in the group text today, what I said. Yeah. It can be overwhelming sometimes, mm -hmm. and right. it's it's great to be able to turn down certain things because at the end of the day we have a brand that we're trying to protect. I got you. So, right. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah. I see. So for the, uh, the the MLK parade, that, that was the whole. That was all y'all. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah, much most majority, of us. Yeah. Majority, all yeah. of us were there. Yeah, you know, what, I think maybe two one, people that weren't there. Right. Person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who was? What Tyrone? Tyrone? Yeah. Yeah. Pat, yeah. Tyrone. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 some of them had to go out of town. Yeah. Because I see, I was like, okay, so, so how? Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's what made me reach out to you. I was like, man, let me let me bring them on to the podcast. And did you see us when we were sitting there, or did you see us when we was moving? Because when we was moving, he left. He yeah, I had to go to work. Well, I seen, yeah, I, I seen, to leave. I think I seen when y'all was moving, and I seen y'all on back up for like a little uh, the trail. The trail. Yeah. yeah. And then Damien okay. left, so yeah, me wasn't and... on them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was like, okay, I, I see him moving around. Yeah. Um. So you started the group. Okay. Once you started the group, what exactly like how how did you start picking these these men? Um, well, one of the advantages is that we used to play ball together. Okay. Before he retired, <laughs> so it was easy. And uh, you know, when we played ball, he didn't have Gray at that time. Okay. So I think I saw a put up. I said, okay. but, I, but I was still the oldest on the court. Though. Okay, I, I still I still couldn't hold. Um, and then Big L, he was another guy that I played ball with, okay. and. Uh, and in Tyrone, he was in the first video because that was our first video. I think that was like in what? It had to be like around April, somewhere around April. It was so. Uh, and then Patrick, you know, I knew him. Um, me and his so wife. So you started was, drafting him. Yes. Okay. So it was it was easier. Um, I knew all of Gay, but I didn't quite know him that well. I don't think we knew each other very well. Yeah. Yeah. We just we we crossed paths. We knew yeah. a lot of the same people okay. and stuff like that. Right. So. Uh, so it was kind of easy, and then um, he. Well, it's so crazy. I knew him, I knew right? him but we yeah. knew each other. But they knew oh, each other. Oh yeah, yeah. So and then I'm looking for some shoes for the uh, the black tie event, and I ran an Andre. Mm. <laughs> we both just shot, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I. <laughs> it was weird because I went. How are you approaching? Oh, that's oh, that's 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 no, I, yeah, that, that's, that's got to be. Why. They said I. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know where. I want to hear yeah, this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It felt weird. Yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you now. So I'm, I'm looking at my shoes, right? And then I saw him. I said, "Oh man, he got a beard." So I wow, like, that's. How, how do I approach him, right? So I kind of told him, you know, what it is that we do in the community and things like that. And I said, I felt like you have the right look for what I'm trying to do, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and then I asked him to send me pictures and stuff like that. So he did send me pictures and I went through your profile and I try to, you know, make sure that, you know, you ain't at no certain kind of club, right, bad right. image yeah. and all this type yeah. of stuff. And then I saw that he was a family man, mm. you know. So all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. image is everything. Yeah. Okay, definitely. Yeah, we're um, we gonna teach the youth if we out there acting wild. It's exactly. just, it's just yeah. gonna go together. Yeah, so exactly. True. You know, so the pictures that he sent me, um, and then I invited him to an event that we had, which is our calendar release party. Okay. So during that time, um, I wanted the other guys to meet him, you know? Okay. And then after everybody met him, and I said, hey man, what did you guys think about Andre? He said, yeah, he's cool dude, kind of quiet. I said, yeah, you know, because we do have some guys that are quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I invited him to the uh, black tie, and I mean, it's been on, oh, the parade, and it's been on since then. So what was, what was I want to ask you, what was your initial, once he, once he approached you, what was your initial, like? Oh yeah, I was all in. I was all in because I'd be at work sometime, and it'd be young guys that work with me. Mm -hmm. And I see the way that, I see the way that they be dressed, and I'd be trying to just get through to them. And especially the job that we'd be doing, it, it requires you to be dressed a certain way, like having your pants pulled up. And mm -hmm. I see these guys, they want to walk around with their pants hanging off of them, and they fail to realize it make their job responsibility harder and difficult mm -hmm. because the pants yeah. get pulled up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when he mentioned it, I thought about it. I said, you know what? I said, I'd be at work talking okay. to these guys about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I was all in once he said so that. So is there, is there like a, because um, it seems like to me, 
I don't know if y'all created it yet, but y'all trying to create like some kind of like curriculum to like give to the young men. Um, like, you know, like, like I would, I would ask like, like advocacy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, I, I wouldn't say we, we haven't put in like a mission statement on, I on that. Um, one of the things that we actually just recently created at an elementary school um, where they have created is called SPG of the week. So okay. what happens at this elementary school is that that kid that has been doing like outstanding job and outstanding performances for the whole week, he gets to wear a crown with the cape and gets a picture taken with a certificate. Ah, I like that. So like that's that. one of the things that we have. And now uh, one of the other things that we're working on now is taking a young man bowling. Mm -hmm. And when he hangs out with us that day, we're going to take a picture of him with the crown and the cape on, and it's called King for the Day. I got you. And when I was at uh, the high school last week, there was a young man that asked me to mentor him. So he'll be one of the young men that I'll take with me bowling just to pick his brand, kind of see what he, you know, mm -hmm. see what he wants to do, because he said he really didn't know what he wants to do after high school. Mm -hmm. And I told him sometimes, even as an adult, we really don't know what we want to do. So don't beat yourself up because you can't figure it out. And I don't know if it's the parents pushing like putting pressure on him saying, well, you know, you about to graduate from high school, you got to get out of here and figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times we as adults, we know you, sometimes it takes a long time. Yeah, it it right. takes a long time. Yeah. You said somebody was outside? Well, he texts me, um, but I'm on this loud. Okay. So he's saying how to get inside. <laughs> when you got Anthony's telephone? Um, tell I'm on loud too. I think we all loud. Right now. Um, yeah, yeah, we she are. Gotta let him in, she got to let him inside. We're going to edit this part out. Okay, that's fine. Tell him she gotta go all the way outside though. Yeah, cause he's texting. Okay. All right, so but the reason why I asked that because I think the guidance, the, the curriculum, that is something that, that can give them to get them some kind of instructions on like how to be a better, you know, man. Or, man. Like, like, you know, cause we learn by we learn by by seeing we learn by doing. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? You they can hang with you, but at the end of the day, you know you need some kind of assignment. You need some kind of something that that can right. push you to do something. You see what yeah. I'm saying? If, if that makes sense. Though. Okay. Right. Um, how often do you guys meet up? Ah uh, man. Um, I, whenever. I mean, I guess. Yeah, we definitely meet oh, up as many times as can at events yeah and we do have a tech stream that we we communicate every day right um we do have our own separate lives mm -hmm. but at every event we try to have all of us there we all try to talk about whatever we have coming up but we at least communicate once a day at least with a good morning everybody and morning. what we got going on for this weekend or y'all want to meet up for drinks happy hour or something talk but yeah, yeah we communicate every day so um the question, the question I have is, I just lost my brain. Uh, the question I have is, uh, you already answered that question. Um, are most of y'all uh, followers females? Um, I would probably say eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. yeah. It's a good, good, good percentage. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Yeah. My wife was doing a little search. She was doing a little research. <laughs> still not women coming. I hope they not married. <laughs> she was doing a little research. I was like, hey man, we, we, I don't know. It's not, it's not our business to know. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, so this is a question for each one of you, and um, it's a good question because I think people need to know this. What will you? If you can go back, tell your 13 year old self. Oh, Jesus. So that your life Who? can be different today. So we can start with you. What would I tell my 13 year old self? Oh, I have a 13 year old. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I can get that boy. I got one right now. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what would I tell my 13 year old self? What's up? What's up? What's up? Brent, uh, you know what? Hold on, real quick. Take those fellas out the way. Yeah, come on around right here. You're yes, sir. Well, you can get yeah, cut in front. We're going to cut it off. You know, What's going on? Right. How you doing? All right. All right. So what would you tell your 13 year old self so that your life today would be different? Wow, man. Uh, I would say to trust, trust more, mm. you know, trust in what the elders are telling me. Okay. You know, because it took me a while to really hone in on what was said to me. You know, mm. I, mean, I, I, I probably didn't hit it until 
11th grade okay you know and because i at that point i had to you know i grew up in la man in inglewood so it's kind of a different world you know okay, so I got you. it's like the, the light came on basically <laughs> so obviously put more trust in those that are uh you know trying to guide you okay how about you what would you tell your 13 year old self so that today your life will look different my 13 year old self yeah what would you tell your 13 year old self <laughs> Or stay out of the streets. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a given for everybody here. <laughs> At that age, I was in the streets. Um, I tell myself today, just um, you know, I was always, I was never taught about positive energy. Okay, I got you. Now that I'm older, I respect that more than anything. Like positive energy, surround yourself with positive energy, positive people, positive vibes, everything. Because when you surround yourself around the wrong people, things tend to go wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was, I would say, energy, positive energy all the time. What you guys? Um, I have to elaborate on what he said. <laughs> uh, I have to say two things: the streets and the ladies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! Mm -hmm. Can't stop yes. that, bro. Yeah, you can't stop that. I mean, but when you're young, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to tell you tell yourself that. Yeah. Um, but I just wish that. Um, yeah, I think about it. But you know what? I have to say also the streets made me who I am today. Yes. But at the end, if I had to give something positive, uh, just stay on the right path. You mm -hmm. know, don't get distracted by negativity. Right? Yes. Stay focused. What I would <clears throat> tell my son is you got to find a, the positive, uh, positive, influences because a lot so it's so much negativity out there hanging with the wrong individual like you say it, it just leads you down the wrong path and path and it it's just a domino effect so find who understand who you are mm -hmm. and the value that you bring and that'd make your path a lot more a lot better much better yeah. What I would tell my 13 self is to take advantage of the skills and the opportunities that I had. Because when I was growing up as 13, I was like a neighborhood barber. There was two barber shops around the corner. Mm. My mom was always telling me, boy, you need to shut that garage. Because I was just about putting the barber shops out of business. But to me, I kind of felt like it was just a way for me just to get a little bit of money to go out. I didn't take it serious. Mm. And then as, the, as I got older, my nerves kind of started messing with it in my hand. Plus, in elementary school, high school, I was always an artist. It wasn't none that I couldn't draw. Gotcha. But I kind of like pushed all that to the side because I didn't take it serious. But if I look back at it now, I should have stuck with it. Oh, wow. Yeah. What you? Man, Ooh, where do I begin? No, I'll narrow it down to two things. The first thing I would tell myself is follow your dreams. Don't worry about what everybody else wants you to do. Do what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, those people don't affect your life. Absolutely. You know, you have to make decisions for yourself. Which brings me to my second thing. Man, everything you do now will affect your future. I, no, I did not understand this when I was 13, 14, 15, 17, 18. <laughs> had a kid when I was 17 I should have told myself you know what I'm saying no, you just like you, your your life is in your hands and everything you do will follow you and affect your future no matter how insignificant you think it is it will find you and come back up so make sure every move you make is something that you will not regret so uh, I, I love to ask this question on, on this podcast and this, this question is if you can leave something in a tombstone that people can remember you by, mm -hmm. and they can pull it up in the next thousand years. Three things, what three things would you leave in there? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna say one thing, I'm gonna leave my hat, one of my good hats. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna know you put a hat, okay? That's my, my hat, my hat. scarf, okay. and maybe one of my watches. That's mm, what I'm leaving it there, so it'll be good. It. How about wow. you? <laughs> oh, man. I, honestly, man, yeah. I, would, I would leave uh, my Air Force Ones, okay. my <laughs> basketball, and my football. Mm. I was kind of, you know, I was an excited. athlete. Yeah, I was an athlete. How about you? Oh, man. Uh, I think for me, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, people are gonna pull it up. They want to know who you yeah. was. You know what? <clears throat> Something that I always try to do is uh, I try to follow my word. Okay. Um, so. So they let in that. Yeah. You, when you think of me, you'll be like, you know what? He was always a man of his word. Because what I never like to do is sugarcoat nothing. If I can do something for you, I'm gonna do it. If I can't, I tell you, I can't. And I realize a lot of times people just tell you certain things because it sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just gonna be real with you. So yeah. for me, it'll be his word is um, the integrity and you follow his word. Because mm -hmm. your word, that's one thing you got. Gotcha. I think what I would leave in the casket is them clippers fashion I, 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 i've been known for fashion uh, you know whether it's church everywhere they i get compliments all the time on how i present myself and also clippers i mean that's <laughs> that's, that's that's how i've i've sustained in life and it's it's been really good to me so third thing smile i just i'm known for my smile i just <laughs> I, people they they see me just because i'm always smiling it's it makes them feel better and just that's a good feeling so mm. i would just i would just probably just leave a note, a note just saying to treat everyone that you meet with respect mm. no matter how they treat you if you can't deal with them you just can't deal with them that's but good. just a note, a note saying respect man <laughs> <laughs> I don't like thinking about death, but you know. <laughs> or transition. Yeah, that's a heavy question, man. That's a heavy question, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a life transition. Girl, like, what would you leave yeah, when you die? Like, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving some baby oil, <laughs> a couple dumbbells. Nah, some supplements. <laughs> Y'all know what I was about. He's about that. <laughs> no, I'm real though. Um, I'd have him if it was like real talk. I'd have him right on my tombstone. I'm gonna go with something that Rico said. Um, I'm a man of my word. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, whether it's good or bad. So you take that how you want to take it. Um, I like to live under a certain code of honor. You know, like never, never give your word if you're not gonna keep it. Because a man is nothing without his word. Mm. Right, right. Um, and I always followed my dreams, you know. I love that. That's, so that's the it. next question. Right there on the tombstone. Yeah. The next question is, what makes a man a gentleman? So mm. carry yourself. Yeah. Well, I would say the way you carry yourself, definitely. Uh, Shivery not dead, you know. You still have guys that open doors for my, yeah, wife, for, for my wife. One of them. <laughs> and, and, you know. My wife, she don't have to pump her gas if I, I'm driving a oh, car. That's with no gas in that so, car in about three, four years. <laughs> so I, I would definitely say that. Yes, sir. I'd say being selfless. Mm. You know, when it comes to, I suppose the opposite sex, and even your your children or you know others, if you can do something, you do it. Mm. You know, being a gentleman doesn't just mean, you know, catering to ladies. You know, I can be mm. a gentleman to my homie. Like, hey, you right. good? You need something? You know what I'm saying? Right. Or hey, you, you need to fix your tie? You know. Uh, let me help you tuck shirt in right. You know what I mean? Like just looking out mm -hmm. for other people other than yourself, you know? And uh, sometimes, you know, sacrifice, you know, be, be a gentleman by sacrificing sometimes what you need for the good of other people. Gotcha. Anybody else? <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I was going to say. That's <laughs> <laughs> just all about how you carry yourself. Right. right. Yeah, it's right. just be right. care. Respect. You know, respect. respect. Treat people the way you want to be treated, yeah. you know, the whole nine. I mean, that's what it all boils down to because, you know, a lot of brothers don't have respect for each other for no reason. A lot of brothers you know don't have respect mean? for themselves. Each other, walk past each other, don't even say what's up to each other. I'm like, man, we got to get out of that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I acknowledge everybody around me. And if you don't speak, that's on you. At least mm -hmm. I had my energy came. Hopefully I can change my life by saying something positive on a bad day. So there's been times where people, you know, they going through something because you never know what people going through. That's right. And you say one thing or just say, hey, I hope you have a blessed day or anything you say that's positive, it changed their whole mm -hmm. outlook on that day. You know what I'm saying? So, and I've ran into that a lot. You know what I mean? I always try to make people laugh, smile. That's just my character. I'm always be that way. I'm never going to change. So, um, and I want each one of you to answer this. What are some key components to being a well-dressed man? 
Uh, I would say definitely. It, it starts with the, the feet. I mean, you know, you go back to even when I was single, pretty much that old saying, a woman, she can look at your feet and kind of tell how that how you mm -hmm. probably be. So, I mean, it starts with a, a nice pair of shoes. Uh, then, you know, belt, you accessorize. So you accessorize from there. And it's, that's, that's what I was. For myself, I would say, make sure that all my clothes fit perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I buy a suit and the sleeves are wrong, the cuff ain't right, I can't wear that suit. It's just, <laughs> can't wear yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. hmm. I agree, because like, you know, I've always said, you can, you can pick up the best looking suit or outfit, whatever it may be, but if it don't drop right on you, it don't work. So get what works for you. Yeah. Your right. physique. You know, yeah, make sure it fits with you know, your physique yeah. and everything. And, um, just stay groomed up, you know what I mean? Being groomed. <laughs> I think that's the main component right there, be staying groomed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fresh cut, trimmed up, deodorant, cologne, all that. I think I get dressed differently than how you do it because you say you shoes from the shoes up. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure my outfit down. Right. So everybody's a little different. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be the outfit for me. After the outfit, then I work on the shoes. But he said he worked on the shoes, yeah. he worked on the outfit. So everybody's different. Mm -hmm. I'll do the hat. <laughs> <laughs> he do really? the hat. I never would have guessed. I start off with the hat. And go down. And everything else out, man. Because <laughs> y'all yeah, already know me. I'm going to wear a hat and a scarf, man. No matter if it's hot, cold, no matter I wear it. Yeah. You know, That's it's just like my six. So you a scarf, so. man. How many scarves you might say you got? <sighs> scarf, probably about 40. Okay. And hats, about 253. How you keeping up with all this? That man's specific. 253. Dang. And he said 250, so I just gave mine away. You know what I'm Just like this for hats, scarves, shoes, and watches. That's what I collect. Okay. Wow. This size right here. Yeah, I'm going to collect it. So this brotherhood that y'all building, all right? Y'all accepting anybody else? Or y'all locked in for what y'all got? I, I like to say we locked in. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a group back in the day when I was little. What was it called? Uh, I was living in California. It was like a Spanish group. Was it the, not Menudo, was it Menudo? Menudo. Yeah. Group? Menudo. Yeah, yeah, I think Menudo. when they turn like a certain age, they had to go out and then somebody else come in. That's kind of like how I feel, okay. you know. But uh, we, we created a brotherhood. Okay. And uh, we just, we're trying to keep it close and itch. Okay. So that's kind of how I look at it. Well, I'm on, I'm on the edge though, because now they, they, they call me salty. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm white next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so what's the plans for 2023? What's the plans for y'all? Oh man, um, traveling. Uh, our next trip right now, we'll be in Dallas, uh, okay. March the 18th at a blue carpet event, uh, it's, a, it's a Women on the Rise Presidential Achievement Award that we're making guest appearance for. Okay. Uh, we're looking for some things also uh, in the East Coast area. Um, besides that, like I said, um, podcast, uh, radio station tomorrow. Uh, you know, we've been also on news outlets right now. Mm -hmm. um, fashion show this Saturday. Um, and a couple of places, you know, locally around town, uh, doing some club promotions and things like that. Uh, we'll also be speaking this Friday at a high school. Okay. So, and then that following week, uh, career day at an elementary school. So we try to tie in everything that we're doing and uh, make sure that we're also showing young men uh, the proper way of not only becoming a man, but how to dress and how to talk in public if you yeah. want to be respected. Mm -hmm. So. Don't forget, uh, the elderly home. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we talked that before you got here. So but no, my uh, bad, I was late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like we talked about earlier, uh, you know, 29 elderly ladies uh, have no idea that we all gonna walk in there with roses and balloons and Catered to them for Valentine's Day. I hope nobody pass out, man. I know, right? The Rico trying to open it. Hey, I might go in the next day. Swoon them ladies to death. Hey, hopefully you got some, uh, some oxygen tank or something. <laughs> so, two things. I got two part questions. So, how's the DMs and do people recognize y'all in public? Oh, yeah. 
when we're in the group, I do know people recognize us. Um, I haven't been recognized for being a part of the group solo yet. Okay. Unless I go somewhere where we normally go, and I'm like, oh, you're such a... But um, the DMs, that's ridiculous. I don't even want to talk about that, man. <laughs> it's just ludicrous, man. It's... And it's bonkers. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, say. Usually the one that's always on our site page, mm -hmm. then yeah. blows up. Oh, wow. And yeah. I always say that I didn't create the group for us to be like a meat market. I mm. created the group right. for us to help educate young men. Now, it comes with the territory right. when it you does. see, you know, good looking men in suit or whatever. Um, but I tell everyone I'm not here to as a matchmaker. That's not my job. Mm. I said now. I'll tell whoever's inboxing me, hey, we're going to be at such and such event. Gotcha. Now, if that person shows up at this event and one of the guys that are single happens to like that person, then that's them. But I'm not going to be the one okay. to set. That's not my job. And that's not the reason why we started the group. Right. Right. Set up crew. We yeah. Just <laughs> positive things for this community. Exactly. You know what I mean? So. So let's talk a little bit about uh, black men and mental health. Because I mm -hmm. think it's, it's a touchy subject, but nobody really like to talk about it. Okay. Right. Um, what do y'all think we struggling with as black men? I would say diabetes. Mm. <clears throat> so how can we how can we change that narrative to help each other? Well, I know for myself, I was like borderline, which I had never been before. But my doctor just told me to pay attention to what I was eating. And once I started that, I would say about a year later, my numbers started dropping. And about three years after he told me that, I did my blood test, everything was clear. Mm. And one of the things that I can say, I think that has been helpful is that we have a group chat and we also do Zoom. And if any one of us is dealing with some issues, we'll let the other person know what you can probably do to help better yourself. Gotcha. Um, so like, hold each other accountable. Exactly. Right. Like yeah. for myself, um, you know, which they all know now. Uh, and I kind of started it honestly right after I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So I've been dealing with that. Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I got to have a PET scan. Okay. Uh, my numbers not looking too good, but I'm going to go. I'm going to pray because I'm going to be all right. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been always been watching over me. Um, but what I let a lot of them know is that get your PSA check. You know, because I did a, a, a video that went viral and I had people that I haven't talked to in 15 years reached out to me and said, man, thank you for that video mm -hmm. because it gave them um i guess the energy or whatever to say you know what let me go and get checked one guy went and got checked and guess what he got prostate cancer mm -hmm. but if i never did that video he probably would have never went and when you get to like stage four it's kind of hard to get rid of it you know at that point you're just doing everything you can just to kind of prolong your life so the good thing is that any disease if you get checked early a lot of it can be prevented Mm. But you know, we as black men, we just we just don't like to go to the doctor, right? Hey, my, my wife, she set the appointment, so you got to go and get going. See, then you, gotta <laughs> the you know, but we we have to, and that's what I be telling these guys, man. Just go, just mm -hmm. go, even when you don't want to go. And if you got a good woman in your corner, she should be the one like say, hey, babe, right. you need to go. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, so the narrative of of black men, because I I, I, have a, I have a I have a group of people that I deal with too. Okay. And the narrative of black men not going to the doctor and struggling with mental health is huge. It is. So <laughs> what's what's what y'all doing to basically be somebody's father figure? Yeah. Is important for the black community because it's, it's a lot of young black men that's hurting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and we have to find a way because who who y'all might touch. I can't touch who I right, might right. touch. Y'all can't touch. Right, right, but we right. just all have to find a way to come together and help with the mental health because I'm telling you, people are struggling. I mean, yeah. you have a you have a lot of kids because my, my my wife she do counseling. Okay. And she counsel uh, kids that that don't go to regular school. They at home. Mm -hmm. And they're I mean the mental health. I mean, it's millions that's of real. kids <laughs> that's just at home chilling. Yeah. They all need somebody to talk to, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a saying I like to say in the barbershop, it's okay to be not okay. Mm. Right. A lot of times you look at the social media, everything, everybody's showing a perception like of everything uh, is peachy cream. Everything is beautiful. It's not, I call it it's not. And the yeah. reality yeah. of it is, I mean, they're going through major things, people but, are miserable, but it's know? okay to be not okay. So that's when that's a, a opportunity to speak you know what i'm saying speak life into someone or hey man when the last time you went get your teeth checked or any just any little thing and so mm -hmm. that that's real big and it just it's just one of those things where we men are so prideful that 
we don't we we try to withhold everything and mm -hmm. and yeah. we don't have to we have a brotherhood of people that that genuinely care i mean and it's just we need more people like that well it's better when you have an outlet like this but yeah. everybody doesn't and that's right. what we're trying to provide you mm -hmm. know we're, we're so stigmatized that we're not supposed to show our emotions we're not supposed to talk about it to anything you just suck it up that drives you crazy yeah. that's part of it you know you can't you can't keep every single emotion in because when something does set you off, now you've lost it and you look insane. Mm -hmm. You know, because right. you didn't have an outlet to just tell somebody, I'm feeling this way. And now you feel a little better because yeah. somebody else could say, you know what, I was feeling that way too. Talk to me. You know, let me, let's talk about it. Let's, let's converse about it a little bit better to help you feel better as opposed to, mm -hmm. you ain't supposed to talk about that. You know, don't talk right. to me about that. Don't talk to nobody about that. Go home and get drunk or do some drugs you know don't I do that it's funny that we don't let we don't let each other express our emotions right, right. We, it's stigmatized we're not brought up saying like you're yeah. weak yeah. you're weak yeah. if you talk man, about how you, like, feel. Man, you just don't cry yeah you know, these things you just don't do and i just remember when when i said that i had prostate i remember vividly there was two guys two different guys one said first of all i'm not gonna pay a doctor to give me no bad news mm -hmm. then it was another guy what do you expect said, oh i would have never told nobody that that made you feel weak no, it doesn't. <laughs> I actually got yeah, energy ignorant. and I felt like God chose me because he knew I was going to be quiet. He knew I was going to share the word. He knew I was going to tell others. And I mean, you know, since then, that's all I've been doing. And being transparent to me is the most important thing. The yeah. problem is we're not being transparent. All right. You know, all right. for instance, um, I follow sports. So the way LeBron acted when he when he got involved that, with the thing, people posted, oh, Jordan would have never did that. LeBron, we... But it's like, we're not letting people express their emotions without right. calling them out. Right. On like, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's just some, a real issue. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Like, that's true. Cause uh, like, I, like I always taught my kids, my, I got three sons, they all grown. I always taught my sons, I said, you know what? Don't ever let nobody say you can't do something. You can do whatever you want when you put your mind to it. And you gotta wanna be able to do it, depending on what you wanna do. But um, at the end of the day, even we older gentlemen as brotherhood, we want to be able to educate the youngsters and tell them, look, you ain't got to be our age to be brotherhood. Because, you know, when I'm out, just like he said, a lot of people comment me on how I dress and this and that, males and females. I get as much comments males mm -hmm. as I do females. But what I tell them is, man, you don't have to wait till you get a certain age to dress like this. Uh, you know, I'm just this is just me. I love the dress. I love fashion. Right. If it's something that you like doing, do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody say, oh, man, hey, you're going you to look too like much like a pretty boy, or, you know, just because you come from the streets. Yeah. And that's what's wrong. People that come from the streets, just because you come from the streets, that doesn't mean you have to be street sense when it comes to being in a positive environment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these youngsters, they just want to be hardcore. And, you know, that, that it burns me. As much as it burns me up, sometimes I want to tell my brother, man, ain't that serious, man. Relax. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And that's what we need. If we don't get into their mental... They they gon they gon stay that way, man. It's just that mental health is real. Like yeah. you say, it's Definitely. real, man. Yeah. And then you know, all these prescribed all these medications and all that. I don't believe in medications, but that ain't even helping no. That's making them worse. Yeah, if you ask me. Right, so right. that's my take on that. I right, sorry, a couple more questions, then we're done. Um, the next question is, uh, let's talk about your book. Okay. Uh, well, man, uh, I actually have two books coming out. Okay. Uh, the first one I actually was working on called uh, I Escaped the Violence But Not My Pain because I've been through so much in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody always say, man, dude, you need to write a book. So I started writing a book and uh, then I started doing um, relationship blogs in a magazine. And then I just got on the subject like, you know what? I need to write a book about something that I have been doing for a lot of years. I've been a sports agent for over 20 years. Oh, wow. So I've experienced and I've seen a lot. So that's why I came up with this book called First Round Draft Pick. Mm -hmm. and, and in this book, it basically talks about the life um, of, a, of a sports agent trying to make a decision on true love. You know, they always say love has no color. So within this book, um, within this book, he basically dates uh, four different ladies, um, black, white, Hispanic, and uh, Caucasian. Oh, I, yeah, you gotta run. Like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I hope they didn't leave. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so he just kind of like dated because like you said, love has no color. So at the end, he had to make a decision who he's going to pick mm -hmm. with true love. And throughout that book talks about the sports agency world and the whole nine yards. So 
Mm -hmm. I was excited about it. So what's your next one? Uh, oh, uh, it's called, uh, well, I guess now since I, <laughs> with this group here, it's been taking up a lot of my time, but uh, I'll, I'll get back into it. Okay. I was able to finish this honestly because of COVID. A lot of us was on shutdown. Shutdown. So you, you have enough time to do anything. Anything. Right. Right. So that's why I got this book out. So hopefully we don't have any other disaster like that <laughs> for the other book. But I'll, I'll, I'll get to it when I get a chance, man. So um, make sure I ask all the questions. Let's see. Make sure I ask all the lady questions. I'm just double checking. Hey. All right, so uh, this will be the last question that we all can answer, though. Okay. Uh, what's your thoughts on being a black man in America in today, 2023? What's your thoughts on it? I guess we go around the clock, Ross. Start off with you. My thoughts being a black man in America? I mean, I know we got it hard no matter what, no matter what we do, where we go, what we say, how we are with people, we... As black men got it hard. We have so much pressure on us from our ancestors to today that we strong. Like we still that's why we kings. We strong. Mm -hmm. So to see the things that happen, the police beatings and all that, man, it's depressing. That's why they need more groups like us to help these young men. So they won't have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, I hate to say it, but you nowadays you gotta dress a certain way. Uh, cause I'm, cops never stop. Cops never mess with me. I don't have that look. That's the look that they look for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm just, I don't know. It's just, it's hard in America, man. But you just got to keep doing it. Doing what you do. You know what I mean? Just keep staying focused. Keep being positive. Keep being real. And just, you know, love others, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's all you can do. Man, being a black man in today's society. 2023. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is as difficult as it's ever been, mm -hmm. you know, and I say that coming from the inner cities of LA, man, and knowing that our predecessors went through a lot to try to change the environment that we, you know, came up through, and to see that to this day, we ain't, we ain't overcame a damn thing, and people need to understand that. Mm -hmm. As a black man, we still have to fight. We still got to, we still struggling to make it, you know, to make things right. And if you are one of, I would say, the, the of the mindset that it doesn't matter to you, then you're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, as a black man, always put your best foot forward, do what you can do for those around you and bringing those others in to help them out. That's how I see it. Black man in America. <laughs> um, man. Yep. It's it's tough. It's tough. Um, and you know, I, I've seen the transition because you know I was I felt like I was part of that back then growing up. I made a change in my life. And I I look at the news every day and I see the direction that it's that it's going and it's not looking good right now. So we as brotherhood is going to do our part and try to help change as many as we can mm -hmm. because i truly believe that there are probably going to be several young men that's going to head in the wrong direction but they may have heard something that we said and we don't know that might be the next president you know that's might true. be the next lawyer next district attorney you know next doctor just a, a good citizen and he won't get caught up into the other system and spending years and years in jail. So, um, man, it's just, we got to tough, but we got to do the best that we can and continue staying <laughs> positive and being role models. That's all mm -hmm. we can ask for. Well, being a black man in 2023, I'm going to go more on the positive uh, note. Uh, for so many years, we've been deemed to have to be 10 times better than the next man, but change is coming you know we got our first black president i mean things so if if you put your mind to whatever it is you can't achieve we got to we got to quit playing a pity party and mm -hmm. put our pants up and make things happen so yeah. we can't we can't depend on somebody else to do it for us we have to we have to 
We had to be big boys and men and make it happen. Mm -hmm. I would say for each individual, we have a right to carry ourselves the way that we want to. <clears throat> but at the same time, we can't carry ourselves in a manner that's going to hold us back. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times when we get held back, we're holding ourselves back just by the way that we're carrying ourselves. Mm. I'm going to keep it short because I could talk about this all night. <laughs> <laughs> keep it real. Um, as far as being a black man in America in 2023, you can tell a lot has changed, but a lot hasn't changed. Just with this nonsense that just happened with Tyree Nichols. And we can be mad about it. We can be very angry about it. But there's a different dynamic to this one as opposed to like Rodney King or George Floyd. Those brothers were black that beat this black brother. Yeah. So what's really changed? It's gotten worse. Not only has it gotten worse, now it's televised. You know, and what's what's really changing? What's really changing other than we're watching it? You know, you before smartphones and technology and Internet and all of that, you just heard about it. You might have seen a clip on the evening news and you can go on with your life. Now it's circulating on social media. It's on YouTube. Your kids is looking at it. Everybody's looking at it and you can't stop it. So. All of this negativity is infecting people's minds and you, there's no way to not have a conversation about it and try yeah. to figure out how we can stop as much of that as possible. But it's just so rampant, the the ignorance and the hatred and this rampant stupidity. You know, it's just it's just ridiculous. So our our main goal is to try to prevent as much of that as possible, because Let's be real. There was no reason for that to happen to that to that dude. There's no reason for that to happen. And not not one of those five brothers could stop beating on that dude. That's blood. I mm, don't get me started. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me got because I'll just keep going and going. It's just ridiculous. So I it's it a lot has changed, but not a lot has changed, man. So y'all anything else? Anything y'all wanna ask me? What did I miss the first? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. You, you ain't missed that much. <laughs> he was just asking us about how we got started and all of that kind oh, of okay, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to close it out. Man, listen, man, thank you guys for watching this podcast. Listen, this is why now is your time. Go out, design the life you want, create the brand you deserve, but most importantly, leave your legacy through your own information and product. Be blessed.